Hello folks and welcome to an inkdependence.com video review. This time we have a sailor pen. This is a pen that Ron from Pen Chalet sent out to me and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, it is only my second sailor pen actually. I've got one more that I got just this summer. So I'm new to the sailor game, uh, but I'm glad I'm getting to, to try one of these out. This is going to be the 1911 standard, which is also kind of small. They have a large version, so they have large and standard. So think of it as, uh, I don't know, large and regular maybe, or large and small. But anyway, it's a little bit of a smaller pen. Uh, we'll take off this cardboard sheet, throw that over there. Uh, it comes in a nice navy or sort of midnight blue box with the uh, sailor logo and sailor name there on the top, sort of embossed a little bit. And uh, other than that, pretty sturdy box, nice cushiony sort of top, but very solid bottom. So. Uh, open it up, and there's the pen. This is the transparent version, the demonstrator version. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, you've got uh, sort of standard box interior, you know, uh, silky stuff on the top. And then a removable bottom. This is something that I miss when it's not there, although it's one of those things we don't really think about, but when it's not there, I do miss it. So you take that out, and inside you have all kinds of directions. Uh, very important stuff in Japanese, I guess. Uh, I don't read Japanese. Fortunately, it's also in English, so how to use all of their pens, uh, that sort of thing. Um, so if you don't know how to fill a pen, I mean, let me know, and maybe I'll make a video about that. And, hey, I sort of reassembled that. Yeah, it's kind of like a map. Once you unfold it, you're never going to fold it right again. Uh, also, we have a converter. I've got the converter in the pen, as you can see, so it's not in there, but it comes with one. Also comes with two cartridges, which is really nice. Uh, keep in mind that Sailor uses a proprietary cartridge, so if you look there, it's kind of a bigger, uh, bigger mouth there than on some others. Uh, sort of, uh, sort of pilot-like, but not going to fit. So if you're going to use uh, this pen, you got to use either their cartridges, which are probably excellent because I like all of their inks, but I haven't used the cartridge yet, uh, or you got to use their converter. I'm a converter guy. Uh, you can see here it's got a nice uh, space here to put actually to put this, I suppose, if you want to. Let's see, does it fit? It does indeed. So you can put that in there if you want to keep it sort of separate. Also, this is plastic, which is kind of nice. You don't see that on very many boxes. They're usually just kind of there. So put all that stuff back in there. Uh, and the reason I said I missed this when it's not here is that it gives you a convenient place to hide all this stuff. Otherwise, it's just kind of sitting here on the top. And I've got some boxes like that, and I don't particularly care for them. Uh, as far as boxes go, this is a pretty good box. It's fine for presentation and stuff, such. Uh, I do want to encourage other pen makers to do stuff like this, though. This is from Franklin Kristoff, and it's just a little pouch. Nice little soft pouch, the little leather exterior, a little zipper. And I'll actually use this. I do carry around pens in it. Other people do as well. It fits a couple of pens if you don't mind them getting close. Uh, but it's better than the box because you can carry it around. So, uh, folks, you're going to spend money on boxes. You know, spend money on a pouch instead, maybe. So, anyway, that's that. All right, let's take it out of the box. Put the box over here. Or over there, somewhere. All right. So what we have here is a very nice demonstrator pen. It is, as you can see, full on clear. Some other demonstrator pens are not quite as clear. So uh, like here we have the Lamy Vista. It's not quite as clear. Actually, you can tell the difference quite a bit in the feel of these things. Some people say, well, it's a plastic pen. It's going to feel the same. It does not. This is a much more substantial sort of pen. It's, not, it's a little bit heavier, actually, than the Vista, but not a huge amount. Most of the weight is actually right here because uh, there's metal on metal there. So we'll show you that in a, bit, in a minute. Uh, here you can see, you can actually can't see the nib of this pen. It's hidden, which is nice and pretty, um, but it's also kind of harder to clean. You end up with, the, with like ink around here, um, and it's not like fully uh, transparent. So you got that on that Vista. Have we got any other pens sitting around like this? Let's see. Uh, I guess I've got, <laughs> I guess I've actually got a few. Uh, so these are colored demonstrators. You can see the nib, but uh, they're not clear. This one, full on clear. So uh, definitely check this out. It's a very pretty pen. That's one thing I'll probably say a few times as I go. Uh, I actually wasn't expecting to like this pen nearly as much as I do, just because I don't usually like gold furniture. Uh, this is 24 karat gold plate on the furniture, from what I read on the interwebs, and that's pretty nice. So um, it's, uh, it's a very shiny gold. Actually, it doesn't seem to attract too many fingerprints. Uh, I, I wipe it every once in a while, but not really. I, I just haven't had, had that problem. And it's super shiny. It's very pretty. I mean, look how pretty this is. Uh, and I don't even like gold that much. Everything else I've got is silver. Uh, well, pretty much. Um, so you take this out. And actually, uh, one thing to say about this cap before I move on too far. Let's go ahead and talk about caps. Uh, you can take out this little uh, inner cap bit that keeps the, uh, the ink from drying out. And you might need to do that because it uh, does tend to collect ink right around here. If you give your pen a nice fresh fill... Let me put this over here so it doesn't roll away. 
stay there pen. All right, uh, and I've got a pencil here, I think. I'll take one out of the box. I just got these interesting solid graphite pencils. I haven't actually used it yet. I got a little graphite from touching the edge, but um, what you can do is if you get ink in here, and you can actually see this a little bit right here, because uh, I did just fill this pen not too long ago, and I got ink all around here, and I went on uh, Instagram and said, hey, how do you get the ink out of there? Because I've done it with other pens, but I hadn't thought to try doing the pencil eraser trick. Which is you put that in there, and you can just draw this inner cap out. And then you've got a fully transparent cap. Now, it won't keep your ink as wet, so I would, you know, I would keep it in there, but well, let's go ahead and put this on and see how it looks. Actually, I haven't tried this. Which I can. Actually, that's very pretty. I don't know. Maybe I'll run it without the cap and see how long it takes to dry out. I don't know. I'll run it without the inner cap anyway. But you can take that out, and then putting it in is just as easy. Uh, you just kind of take it, and actually, you sort of wipe the ink off the edges, or run it under a faucet. That's what I usually do. And just put it back in there. Do a little bit of a poke. Poke. And there it is. Stays in, doesn't come out. So, anyway, that's a trick for y'all. If you haven't seen that before, that's a way to do that. So you can take care of that. All right, well, we're talking about the clip or about the cap some more. Uh, it does have a very nice tip. You can't really take photo photography of this. Uh, I've had a, I had a problem doing that just because my camera wants to focus on the shiny gold and won't focus on the sort of distorted area in the middle, which I think is a very cool effect. I can see it pretty well here on the video, so that works good. Uh, the clip is very nice. It's sort of an understated clip, but it's got a little bit of a contour to it that's nice. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty stiff, but it goes over um, you know, shirt pockets and plackets and things just fine. I haven't tried it on jeans. I, I don't know. I, I don't really put it on the corner of my jeans. I'll, I'll hang like a, a ballpoint there, but I don't do that with fountain pens. I don't want to scratch it up or you know, some other dumb thing. Uh, the band around the middle, actually, I was a little bit dubious about this. Uh, I haven't gotten into the 1911 before because the solid color versions of this pen just seem to, uh, uh, I, I don't know, they, they don't really call to me. This one does, but the solid color ones, I don't know, this seems like it's too much. But on this transparent one, it really adds a bit of interest and it kind of breaks up the, the pen uh, as well. So and if it wasn't there, you just have, I don't know if you have like a little thin band. I don't know, it looked kind of weird. But I think it looks good on here. It says, um, uh, Sailor De Japan founded 1911 is what it says going around the edge. Might not be able to see it too well in video. Well, it looks okay. It looks all right. But uh, it does look nice. The font is good. The placement is good. You've got a lot of like nice uh, clear, not clear, but um, uh, unadorned gold down here at the bottom instead of around the edge. So I think that's very cool. Um, so anyway, that's the cap. Uh, moving to the other end of the pen. This finial bit here, I don't know if it's technically a finial because it's not very decorative, but whatever, I'm going to call it that. It sounds better than pen end. Uh, you can actually see the threads here where it's screwed on, uh, but it is glued in place. You can't take this finial off. Maybe if you heated it up or something, but I'm not going to. Um, so anyway, that doesn't come off, but it does have a nice gold band right here. And actually, this pen posts super well. Uh, it's not, not wiggly. It uh, does, you know take a little bit to get it off of there. So uh, I really do like that. I, I have to post this pen just because it's kind of small. Uh, for my hands. I mean, look at this. It's a pretty small pen. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, what else? Ah, so here you can actually see through this clear section here, you can see the threads on this nib unit. Now there's going to be a little bit of talk about the nib unit uh, later on. Uh, I'll show you some other stuff about that. But uh, then it goes into this gold piece, which is actually what uh, uh, screws the barrel onto the section. This gold piece right here. You have a little gasket right here, a little um, not a gasket, but I don't know. We'll call it a gasket for now. Uh, there, but you can't really use this as an eyedropper just because there's metal threads here, and uh, you just don't want to do that. It'll, you know, it's it's gold plate, I guess. So I suppose you could if you wanted to. I don't know. Somebody give it a try, or if you have given it a try, let me know. But uh, I'm not going to do it. I don't like eyedroppers for one, and I don't want to mess up my pen for another. Uh, here you have the uh, standard sailor converter. It works pretty well. It's a pretty good converter. Uh, this top bit is a little bit loose. You can unscrew that fairly easily. Uh, so if you want to clean it out totally, you know, if you're one of those people that's kind of anal about um, cleaning out your pens and swishing through the whole converter, you can totally do that. It's much easier on this than, say, like a lambing or something where it's kind of very difficult to dis disassemble. Um, so anyway, there you go. It holds a fair amount of ink, and this is not a very, um, it's not a very big nib. This is the HM, the hard medium nib. So, um, you know, it, it lasts for a while. I've only refilled it two or three times uh, with different inks and such. Um, you can see I've gotten a little bit of, a little bit of ink in the threads there. I'm going to clean it out just for my, the sake of my, uh, my sanity. Um, so that's how it looks, and I think it looks really well. Uh, it looks good. Uh, it's, it's long enough to hold like this for me, but again, I have massive hands. 
well, not massive, but pretty darn good size hands. Uh, so you can hold it this way. It's maybe a little bit small around the grip section. Uh, ever since I got this caliper, uh, when I say I, I mean my lovely wife procured a caliper for me. It's a fancy digital caliper. I really like it a lot. And I've been calipering the heck out of things ever since I got it. And so one thing I've noticed is that this one is about, uh, let's see, what did I write down? I wrote 9.7 uh, millimeters around the section here, uh, which is about, I don't know, a millimeter or two smaller than I like. I, I like a nice wide section. I like it at like 11 or maybe 12-ish. Uh, but this is a little bit small, so I do have to like hold it a bit tighter than I would maybe prefer. Uh, and also it's a little bit short. It only comes to here, which is kind of pocket pen sized uh, for me. But if you post it, just fine. And all the weight is actually right here. So it's inside the web of your hand. It doesn't feel over heavy. It doesn't feel back heavy. It feels perfectly well balanced for uh, writing in this, in this fashion. So uh, good job, Sailor, for thinking of us with large hands who might want to have a standard size pen. All right, so that's how it looks. It feels good. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a large version of this which uh, goes for like 250. This one's uh, street price is around uh, 156 is what I keep seeing it for. Uh, at Penn Chalet and other folks uh, that sell these, really around 150-ish. Uh, probably if you ordered straight from Japan, you could get a little bit cheaper. Then you gotta worry about customs and all kinds of like huge shipping fees. It's, that's, that's more than I wanna deal with. So about 156 is where this pen sits. The large version, as I said, is about 250. So that's another $100 for a slightly larger pen. And then if you want the Rialo, which is actually a piston filler, and it's built on the large frame, so uh, 100 bucks for the bump to the large, and then up to like 328 or so for the Rialo, which is a nice piston filler. Uh, so 328 for a big piston filler, I don't know, the price jumps are kind of crazy between this one and the slightly larger version. I think that's maybe unwarranted, but you know, what do I know? I'm just a user, not a, not a manufacturer. Uh, so nib performance uh, is up next. And here's where I have a bit of a story. So when I got this pen, it didn't really work. Um, it just it just didn't write. And I think actually uh, Ron sent this out because it is one that uh, somebody had returned, so he didn't want to resell it. And I said, well, I'll be willing to mess with it. So uh, he sent it out and it just didn't write. And so here's a little clip of a before video. So here it goes, before. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Um, I think, I don't know, maybe they, it's got a bit of a foot on it or something, I don't know. but. Uh, we'll see if uh, Jim Russ from Franklin Christoph can do a little bit of uh, work on it for me, and uh, maybe that'll fix it all up. So I really love the way this pen looks, and I think if it writes really well, that'd be great. But this right here, I hate that nonsense. And this, where it's all fady, no good. So, shallow, works fine. Regular, works kind of garbage. So, any oozle, there's the writing demonstration for the Sailor 1911. There you go. That's it. All right, so as you can see, it didn't really work that well. Um, it kind of worked on the downstrokes and it kind of worked on the, uh, yeah, you know, uh, was it right to left that it worked on? No, left to right worked okay, and then right to left worked badly, and then uh, down to up, like a pushing motion, just didn't work barely at all. So if I did my little squiggles, you would see kind of garbage performance. Uh, and that was unfortunate. Uh, but I sent it off to my buddy Jim Rouse at, um, uh, he works at Franklin Christoph now. That guy has enough pin experience for five people. Uh, fantastic guy and he was totally willing to take a look at it for me. And now it works just fine. You'll see some pictures of this, uh, this review on the blog. But I, it's slightly wet now. It's a, a nice width. It's a good flow. It, the nib is a little bit weird. Uh, let me see if I can show it to you. Well, actually, what happened was not a problem with the nib. I say in the video, I think, that I think the nib is messed up, uh, but it's not really. So if you look there, you can see that it's kind of a bit of a slant to it, which is kind of weird. Um, and I haven't actually been able to look at anybody else's who has a hard medium nib like this, but um, it is a bit strange. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it's very nice. It's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's sort of on the order of that architect nib that's very popular right now, but it's not really, it's not as sharp. It's kind of like a very blunt architect nib, maybe? I don't know, but it's got a bit of a foot, I think. So there's that. Let me show you the nib of my other sailor, which is this one. This is a Pro Gear, regular old Pro Gear. Uh, and this has a different nib. This is a 21 karat nib, uh, but it doesn't really have, come on now, can I manage this? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really have the same kind of foot to it. It looks much more rounded than my, uh, 
in my 1911. And uh, Jim said he'd never seen one like that before either. So maybe it's just kind of an oddity of this pen or maybe this, uh, you know, that nib on that pen. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, apparently the real issue was not the nib, which is perfectly fine. He didn't even have to tune it, I don't think. Uh, but the thing is, when you take this pen apart, um, just like on the... Um, on these like Twisbees and such. You can take the section off and actually come out and with a nib unit. And that works on the sailor as well. You can unscrew the nib now. But I don't think it's supposed to work that way because apparently there was some glue that had gotten onto the feed of the pen from when they, I guess, glued this in. I don't know, something strange must have happened in production. Uh, don't let that scare you off because uh, one thing is, it was, Jim says it came off really easily in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, and so it's totally removable and that's good. Um, the other thing is that I've talked to a bunch of sailor owners and I've never heard a story like this. So mine is just a fluke, like one of those weirdo production flukes that could happen to anyone. So uh, I wouldn't be too worried about that. I would say buy with confidence if you're getting sailor and, you know, whoever your retailer is, if you're going through a, one of our uh, great fountain pen retailers, will probably be able to fix up the problem for you. Uh, Ron, I'm sure, would do that. The Andersons will do that. Goulet's will probably do that. I mean, they'll, they'll take care of you. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, but uh, I am glad to have awesome pen friends who can fix stuff like that for me. Uh, so once he did that, it came out. Um, now there is a bit of a tendency for this um, to unscrew. Uh, so if you look here, you can see a bit of a like plastic thing, and that actually fits into a groove in the nib unit. So when you put the nib unit in the section, it becomes kind of one piece, and you can twist it, and you can turn it against this gold piece in the middle that connects them. Uh, I don't want to do it because I've, I've just gotten this ink off my hands, actually. Uh, this is Ackerman's number five, which is shocking blue. It's a very cool blue pen, uh, blue ink rather, but it does stay on my fingers right there. Uh, anyway, and this hand as well. It's just covered in blue ink because I was messing with this. Uh, but the f unfortunate thing is that the section and the body unscrew off of this gold linkage piece in the same direction. So that kind of sucks. It means that sometimes, since the glue is out of there, and I might put a little bit of sac shellac in there because it'll come off if I need it to, but it'll hold it steady. Um, uh, now, sometimes I unscrew this instead of unscrewing this. It hasn't happened the last few times I've done it. Maybe I finally tightened it down right, uh, but um, yeah, seems to be doing, working fine. So good job working on the video. Uh, so let's do a little bit of a writing sample just for funsies. Uh, I know that Stephen Brown makes this look awesome. I do not. I am not good at writing at this angle. I'm like, you know, bending around a tripod. Maybe he's got a better camera setup than I do. But uh, this is the sailor. Come on now. I just talked about how you're wet. There we go. 1911. Standard. And it writes just fine. That hard start notwithstanding, as I said, I've been messing with this pen and messing with the, the ink and all that sort of thing. And I, I just readjusted this, um, uh, this, this nib and feed and stuff. So it was kind of dry to begin with. Uh, I probably wiped all the ink off there, but no problems. I may have been writing off the camera. I can't look at the camera and the, my writing at the same time. But anyway, Mike says hi. Man, my handwriting is awful when I do it this way. You have to look at this. This is much better handwriting. <laughs> this is not a good position. Anyway, uh, so there we go. There's that. Um, you can actually get this pen in a variety of nibs. So if you don't like the hard medium nib, there are a multitude of other nibs that you can try to find. Uh, it comes in extra fine, fine, medium, medium fine, uh, broad, zoom, and music. Uh, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven different nibs. So if you don't like the hard medium, I would say find one that you do like. My next sailor will probably be a broad, uh, just because the, the hard medium is a little bit fine for my tastes. Um, these are, uh, these do legitimately run smaller than their Western equivalent, these Japanese nibs. Uh, I've not had that experience with Pilot. I know a lot of people have, but uh, the medium on here is much closer to a fine from a Western nib. Um, so if you like fine writing, I mean, you can go for a medium, but also if you like really fine writing, that extra fine is a good nib if you like really small handwriting. I don't. It's not my steez right now, uh, so I don't do that. But uh, you can find it in all kinds of things. The music nib is a two-time music nib, which is honestly a little bit disappointing for me. And I can't tell you exactly why. Uh, I just think the three-time music nib looks cool, so I'd say get one of those maybe from someone else. But um, their music nib you know, writes beautifully. It's super wet. Uh, the zoom nib also is very cool, and you just get to say that you have a zoom nib, which is rad. Um, but uh, it's it's very a very wet nib, and it takes some getting used to. Uh, so I haven't got one of those yet. Maybe I'll get a zoom on my next one. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm not going to get a sailor for a little while. Probably not until uh, the fountain pen show season runs uh, comes around again in May. But 
um, you know, or unless some friendly vendor sees this and says, hey, Madison would really like to get one of those, uh, those Zoom nibs. Anyway, so there's that. Um, other stuff. Comparison to other pens is what I've got next to my list. I actually made a list this time. How about that? Although this does say it's been going for 20 minutes almost. So, All right, so here it is next to some other pens. There's two sailors next to each other, more or less squared up. There we go. And they're about the same size. So this is the Pro Gear, the regular Pro Gear, and this is the standard 1911. The 1911 is a little bit longer because it's got this bulb at the end, uh, but otherwise more or less the same. And you've got uh, the Twisby uh, 5, uh, what is that, 540, that one? And then, uh, let's see, we'll replace it with another orange pen. This is the Monteverde Artista Crystal, which gets a bad rap, but I really like. It's one of my favorite sort of intro pens to give people when I find one at a good deal, and you can find them at a good deal. That's about the same size. Actually, it's almost exactly the same size as the Sailor. I hadn't had those next to each other for a while. Uh, the Twisby Eco is quite a bit bigger. It's a bit longer than either, but uh, you take the cap off, and it's about the same length. So uh, this Eco is actually quite a bit longer than you know, people might think. So uh, what else have I got to compare it to? Uh, this is a Franklin Kristoff I like to show off. I know Scott at Franklin Kristoff has said that he gets people uh, asking him for this pen when I show it onto my blog, which is cool. Thanks for you know mentioning me. Uh, but you can't have this exact one. This is a prototype. They don't make it. It's more complicated than the rest. It's got more colors, and you know it's a weirder acrylic. But this is like a first run of this pen. Uh, it's quite a bit longer. This is the Panther 40, the big 40, not the Pocket 40. So if you're thinking, oh, it's, this is the same size as the Pocket 40, it's not. The Panther 40 is much larger. The Pocket 40 is way too small for me. Uh, let's see, what else have I got around? Uh, this is probably pretty close. Let's see. This is the, uh, the Loom. Ever Castell's Loom. Really like that pen. Another excellent pen. And then, since this one's been getting a lot of uh, play on the blogs and such, this is the Fountain K from Kara's Customs. It's the original brass one. It's not the new brass one, uh, but it's about the same size as well. So lots of pens are in this size range, and they're you know, perfectly good pens. This one's a bit longer than this one, I think, when you uncap it. Of course, you can't post. Oh, wait. Hey, I posted it. That's crazy heavy. I'm not going to do that much more. <laughs> This pen is all brass. It is very, very solid and very heavy. Anyway, so that's a variety of pens kind of put up against this one. Uh, so uh, definitely check out the Sailor 1911. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the, the quality control issues that I had. I doubt they're going to have any problem with you or be a problem for you. Um, oh, let's look at the nib right quick. I forgot to look at the nib. How did I forget to look at nibs? I started telling stories about how it didn't work. And I forgot to look at the thing. So... Well, let's focus. Uh, you don't want to focus, huh? Well, I got something for you. This is, uh, let's give it the loop. Yeah, so this is a fairly busy nib. But it's also a very interesting one. It's got a lot of scroll work there on the edge. It says uh, 1911 there in the middle, the sailor symbol. It says here 14 karat, this is a 14K nib. And then uh, 585, I don't know what that means, but I imagine it has something to do with the 14K distinction. Uh, and then if you put it next to the nib on this Pro Gear, I do like the Pro Gear nib a little bit better in terms of looks, just because I really like that two tone. I think the two tone is gorgeous. Uh, but also, I, I kept taking pictures of this nib. So if you go to the blog, you're going to see a lot of pictures of this nib. Or if you're on the blog right now viewing it, you'll see a lot of pictures of that nib. Because darn if it doesn't look good up close. It's kind of busy, but for once, I don't mind it being busy. I think it looks good. So. All right, there's that. So uh, once again, thanks to uh, Ron at Penchelet for sending this pen out to me, and I apologize to him for taking so long to get this uh, pen reviewed, but uh, it took me a little while. So there you go. Um, go to Penchelet, find this pen or uh, your other favorite sailor dealers. Uh, it costs around 156, as I said, so it's kind of a it's kind of a medium tier, honestly, for fountain pen type stuff. Uh, it would be somebody's first like great pen, probably. So check this out. It's getting to be Christmas if you're viewing this when it came out. So you know, put it on your Christmas list. Also on your Christmas list, uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I didn't mention before. My mom got me one for my birthday. I hadn't had one until September, and uh, so she got me one, and it turned out so good that she got herself one. And they are super good for uh, uh, cleaning pens, and I clean a lot of pens. So uh, if you're a fountain pen person who cleans a lot of pens, uh, get yourself an ultrasonic. It'll save so much time. So uh, also shout out to my mom. Thanks for getting me that pen, that, uh, pen cleaner, that ultrasonic cleaner. All right. Uh, so if you like what's going on here at inkdependence.com, please go to patreon.com slash inkdependence to find out how you can help to support the blog. I'll give you a hint. 
It is through cash money donations. Patreon is an awesome platform that allows content creators to get paid directly by the people that view and value their content. I give you a little bit of value. Maybe you decide you want to give me a little bit of value in return. That would be cool. Uh, I will not turn it down. If you want to give me a dollar a month, that's cool. It will automatically bill you for a dollar. Uh, but every dollar does help. It helps me buy uh, you know, cool stuff for the blog and camera equipment and all kinds of stuff. My next thing is probably going to be a big lighting setup. I think that's what I need is better light because uh, it's not always sunny, believe it or not. Anyway, so there you go. This is uh, Mike at inkdependence.com. This is the awesome Sailor 1911 standard and transparent, their demonstrator version with gold furnitures and a gold nib. Find this at your favorite Sailor dealer. dealer. I suggest Pin Chalet because they sent me this pen. But all the reviews, uh, all the views here expressed are my own. I swear, I really do like this pen. I got to stop using it because I'm using it too much and my other pens are getting neglected. So there you go. That's that. This is a very long review. Peace out.